Phone's been blowing up here today. I know. I don't know why. I think today is me too. I think you're right. You know, you spend two or three days at home and, and trying to do stuff, and then finally today it was like, for me, it was like the day that I was gonna. I, I'm gonna put my crisis hat on and really say, what moves can I make to try to weather uh, if this is, you know, worst case scenario. So, so, uh, uh, so, all right, so Tyler, I, I want you to know that I am. Re- I, I did decide to. Like this is my fifth phone call. You're the fifth separate person who's called today to talk about the coronavirus. <laughs> uh, there you go. Uh, Luke, Luke, Luke just called a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, uh, and then, I didn't get a chance. I'll, I'll call him back here in a few minutes. As you're evaluating what uh, you're going to be able to get closed, there, there there is no way that anything of any consequence closes in the next uh, sixty to ninety days. Yeah. Every, I mean, it. This is just unlike anything that's ever happened before. And it's good to talk about getting money in the hands of people who are working uh, and how fast the economy will fall apart. But uh, after Lehman Brothers went down in 2008, um, unemployment was jumping uh, 100, 200,000 a month. And you're going to get into the same kind of situation uh, with this. 100, 200,000 a month is going to be uh, normal. Uh, there's just no way to stop it. A trillion dollars. So that we're, they're, they're trying to get everybody a thousand dollars. So let's think through what's going on right now. They're going to, they're making the effort to get everybody a thousand dollars, right? Maybe they can get it orchestrated where they're going to wire money to people's checking accounts, but look at all the thousands, tens of thousands of people that the government does not have checking accounts for, <laughs> right? There's no way to direct yeah. deposit because they don't have checking accounts. Or the, yeah. the government's checking account information is wrong because the people have moved and got different checking accounts and haven't filed a new tax return. So let's just forget how they're going to decide who to give money to or not give money to. What's going to be the cutoff is if you, if you make $60,000 a year, but um, you've got losses on your financial statement, will you get $1,000? Uh, I mean, that's going to get to be a, a complicated disaster. But let's say they, they get it orchestrated. Do you... Do you really believe any of your tenants who got a check for a thousand dollars would choose to pay you rent or keep the thousand dollars? Now, in your heart of hearts, what do you think they're going to do? I don't know. I think they'd use it to pay their bills. You don't think they? You think what? They're buying just potato chips and booze and uh, going out? Uh, I think that everybody that's working for a living um, that is depending on uh, somebody giving them a job, right? Mm-hmm. Gets really worried if you go two weeks, the government sends you $1,000. You're out of money till the government sends you that $1,000. So why would you spend the $1,000 on rent? You'd save it. You're not going to spend it on um, drugs and booze. and You're going to save it. You're not going to do anything with it. There'll be a lot of people drinking a lot less liquor, right? Uh, a lot of people smoking a lot less dope. There's going to be uh, a lot of people doing a lot less things because they don't have the money to spend to do it. And so the government sends you $1,000. The vast majority of people are going to save it. They're not going to spend it. They're going to spend it on things they have to have, like utilities. Yep. They'll spend it on cell phones because they want it, they got to be able to communicate with their family. Um, so they'll pay some down on a, a credit card. They'll keep the rest in cash. That's going to be the problem. The, the money that they're going to be getting into circulation is not going to be the money. I mean, it, we're talking about a trillion dollars. That's, you know, in this economy, uh, that's about three weeks worth of money. For the entire economy, right? And you can't get it out in the next three weeks. So even if they inject a trillion dollars into the economy and make ways to do it, it's going to be four or five weeks before it gets out into the hands of the people. Uh, and in the intervening period of time, nobody's everybody's social distanced, right? So 
if we look at where the world is today compared to every other planet, just like I talked about a little while ago, there's never, ever been a time like this in the history of the world where everybody in every country is distancing, distancing themselves from other people in that country. <laughs> and we, I mean, we don't know what Russia is doing, but we're going to assume Russia is not immune to the problem. Yeah. Uh, right. We we certainly uh, we we'll get the reports on what's going on in Italy. And so you say 60 million people uh, in Italy. I mean, it, it just it just begins to uh, 60. So 60 million people were quarantined in China. Six million people being quarantined in Italy. Um, China's beginning to wave things backwards. But the bottom line is uh, there's still millions of people who are not getting out in China going to work. I, I don't see that. So the factories in America are going to continue to work. There will be an economy that begins to, that continues to function. The paper plant, plant plants, paper manufacturing companies, they're certainly manufacturing more toilet paper and paper towels today. Right. Um, the uh, auto industry is still manufacturing cars. The question is whether dealerships, there'll be anybody in the dealerships to sell the cars to. So we, because nobody wants to go out and touch anything. Social media has got everybody absolutely scared to death to touch anything. I mean, I don't, uh, so they were talking about, you know, use late, I think I told you that, but use latex gloves to open up uh, your mail. I mean, um, I mean, that's just, that's just crazy to me. But it's uh, it's definitely got everybody concerned. Uh, and so they're not going to do anything. They're just not going to uh, go out to restaurants. And when when this thing begins to wind down, if the government says it's all clear in two weeks, Tyler. Mm-hmm. So I asked you this question before. You've had a little time to think about it. Would your wife take your baby, her baby, <laughs> mm-hmm. out to... Um, a crowded restaurant like we were in 10 days ago, right? Mm-hmm. If the federal government comes in and says, well, everything's okay, we've got this thing handled, and she sees in the news that there's 100,000 new cases coming, been confirmed by uh, the testing that they're doing. Oh, man. So uh, that's a good question. You know, she has been uh, especially wanting to, she's been almost more than me saying, hey, let's stay home, let's be social distance, let's be smart here. Um but I do think she's going to be ready to be social as soon as somebody gives us the green light. I mean, here's the reality. I know everyone's like, what the hell does testing do? But if you actually can, can roll out mass testing, you can absolutely see in, in not real time, but close to real time, where what cities, what areas are actually going through a major infection right now and what aren't. And that's going to allow people to open up. Um, some cities, some areas to do stuff and have some confidence. So, um, so despite the headlines that say, hey, 100,000 new cases today, um, there will also be headlines saying that there were uh, four, you know, that there were a million tests uh, today, and we know that these areas are safe currently, and these areas are going through a problem. Um, so, now I, I think I see that's, that's more how, how it ends up looking uh, once we can out, roll out some testing. So, um, I I think that um, that whole thing about this area is good and that area is good. They're going to have a real idea on incubation period um, over the next 15 days. So we've got these different people that are being interviewed and saying that they were sick for um, some nurse was on TV that she uh, lives in um, Colorado and she flew to Hawaii and uh, coming back from Hawaii, she began to feel bad. And by the time she got back to, where she lives in Colorado, uh, she was having all of the classic, what are now called the classic symptoms of the coronavirus. And um, she's taking the test and she's self-quarantining. And then she's worried about going back out. In a, in a, how long after she's clear will it be before she goes back out and starts taking care of people as a nurse? Well, the question is how infectious was she in the first five days that she had the virus on the way to go to Hawaii? And, the, and all the restaurants she ate in and all the places she did out there, right? And on the plane coming back. Yeah. Uh, so that incubation period is going to be going on. 
So, I mean, they've still got planes landing in Chicago and you know, 13 airports, and all those people are being self-quarantined. they gotta, they got to go through the check. And again, it's just like in 1900, if you got a temperature, you don't get into the United States, mm-hmm. right? If you go back to that Ellis Island, if you were at Ellis Island and you had a temperature, it didn't make any difference how long that boat ride was. You're not getting into the country. Yeah. Uh, and so it didn't make any difference how long the plane flight was. If you had a temperature when you land at uh, in Chicago or Dallas, Fort Worth, you're not getting in the country. Yeah. Uh, they'll have a place where you can be self quarantined. They'll put you on a military base. You know, they're not going to send you back on a plane somewhere else, but you're not going home. And more importantly, most likely, the people on the plane that you flew in with are going to get quarantined. So I don't think yeah. any of that's happened yet, but it certainly could happen. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. This whole, uh, it's funny, this whole thing has just totally eliminated a ton of arguments that were all over the news for a while. It's certainly border control. Um, oh, that's, yeah. It's just gone out the window. Completely. The most border control we've ever had, we've ever seen across the country, across the world. You're going to start seeing states changing the way that they let people come into their states. Yeah, that's true. We can actually go back to a lot more, uh, you know, uh, state governments and more control. Uh, Well, look at all the government regulations that exist to protect a continue. So government regulations in general are there to protect uh, um, people uh, and make it easier for people to, uh, to rely on somebody else to make a decision for them, right? The government's approved it, so therefore it must be good. I don't need to spend the time to do the research myself. Yeah. Right? Uh, so government regulations are, in general, uh, increasing to protect a decreasing number of people yeah. in society. Well, just look at all the thousands and thousands of pages of regulation that effectively have been eliminated in the last five days. Yeah, I mean, just gone. gone. Just the, I mean, the FDA regulations on testing, on approving testing, human trials. I don't know how many thousands of pages just in the FDA, but they're all gone. Oh, yeah. The EPA, just think about the construction projects that are going to need to get started to put construction workers to work because they're all stopped, right? They're, they're, construction projects... Uh, in general that are already funded are going to continue. There are some construction sites where people were uh, staying home, these bigger sites, but I think most construction work is going to continue. So people will be going to work. People will be getting things done because we're not in the same kind of lockdown that they are in uh, Italy or, but you know, they're not doing construction work in San Francisco. Um, so everything stopped there, but across the country, the manufacturing plants are going to run, the jobs are going to be there. Uh, but the societal change, if this, and which I think it's going to go on for several months. I just don't think just general queuing theory says that it's got to go on uh, for you know multiples of 14 days as the incubation period makes people sick. They've yeah. traveled, and then those people that they've met. So I think we're looking at, you know, several months into the future. Mm-hmm. And so you've got, you've done well, you've accumulated cash, you've got rental properties. Uh, but I'm not expecting anybody to pay rent in April. Yeah. I mean, I'm just not. I mean, I think it's a mistake um, to plan that you think people will pay rent in April. It, it would be wonderful if they do. I'm all for it. Yeah. But I don't, if, if it was me, I wouldn't pay rent. Yeah. I'd, I'd make sure the utilities work, make sure that I've got gas for the cars, make sure my car payment's made, right? Uh, and so it goes on 90 days. You survive. I survive. Uh, business, we figure out how to work with our tenants, make things right for them, help them, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, because, you know, te- technically, uh, I'm a tenant to the bank, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, so I got to deal with the lenders to be sure that they don't foreclose on the properties because 
everybody was paying. Nobody's not paying because they don't want to pay, right? Yeah. They still yeah. have a job, right? So, but a trillion dollars gets sucked up into this economy. It's like it never existed. By yeah. the time by the time they get it into the market, it'll it'll be as if it never existed. You wind up then looking at another trillion dollars coming in on top of that. And I don't think we're through this social distancing. So a year from now, we're still recovering. But let's say in June, just to pick a, a date, um, we got to get con like the construction projects that didn't get funded are all now wanting to be funded. And everything's going to be put on a, on a fast track. I mean, do you really believe that the EPA is going to be able, the, the federal government is going to let the EPA stop road projects, um, rebuilding infrastructure projects, you know, that whole thing about uh, um, they were shovel-ready projects uh, during the Obama administration uh, because they were still trying to enforce the EPA guidelines. So, so you had to have had all your stuff in place before the project could be shovel-ready and it was one of the problems with getting projects funded. Yeah. Do you really believe, I mean, seriously, that we go through uh, three months, four months of massive inactivity, 15, 20, 30 percent unemployment in this country? D I mean, I'm being serious, Tyler. D you're, you're, uh, you and your wife are really very um, conservation oriented, very very careful about everything. You do all the right things to do with the environment. Do you think, I mean, seriously, do you think that they're going to be able to stop anything or hold anything up? Uh, I, I'm, I don't. <laughs> yeah. They're going to want any business that wants to do anything. Just, yeah. Yeah. Do it. Make some money. So, um, there, there's going to be close and close enough is going to be good enough pretty soon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And so, uh, you, you just look at a situation where we get through, we help our tenants get through, um, we, our, we work with our banks, our banks work with us, uh, we figure out how to move everything forward, but how, how are houses going to be built in the future? Um, because all of a sudden it becomes real spec, every, every, you know, home building is a speculative business. Oh, yeah. Right. Super risk. So you've got a situation where because they're it's speculative, you have to be really strong to be able to borrow money to be a home builder today. So that's the reason, yeah. you know, the vast majority of houses are built by national or super regional builders. Yeah. The other side of that, though, is that in the future, think how much stronger you're going to have to be to be a home builder because how many home builders are going to be able to withstand 90 days of no sales? Yeah. I mean, that's going to be the situation uh, that's going to drive everybody crazy. My, my cat came back in the room between, yeah. between the, between the three dogs and the cat. I just can't get any peace. I <laughs> know. Uh, what, um. what, what is the, so home building is going to be, really hurt. So they're going to have to encourage, somebody's going to have to pick up the guarantees on, on the home building. The, the, uh, if the government wants home building to exist, they're going to, somebody's going to have to pick up the guarantees. And is that considered a bailout? I, I feel like I'm boring you with this stuff, Tyler. No, no, it's just a lot to take in. It's a whole lot to take in. So, so the, the, uh, the, 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 short, the short end of the story is that uh, we're going to get into, there's no way that this gets over in two weeks. There's no way that it uh, is significantly wound down in a month. So that puts us into the middle end of April. I think you're still going to have all kinds of issues with going out to dinner and travel um, in May. So I'm looking for the end of May before I start going out, have you know, going back to lunch every day of the week and um, having 
um, meetings after hours and going to um, public meetings. You're right. You're right. I think you're exactly right. I think anyone that thinks it's two weeks uh, or a month, um, I think you're. I think they're just short sighted. Um, and we're, you know, probably going to have to endure one or two more of these, um, honestly, uh, as they're trying to figure out how to fight this thing for the next year. So, I do believe they'll have a, um, a a vaccine, which the vast majority of people will be able to take, um, and ready to deploy a year from now. Yeah, I think so too. I think a year from now, we're talking about people getting vaccinated. So that puts us into the fall of 2021 before we know how, whether it's going to come back in any kind of vengeance and. And I do think by 2020, the way the world works, by 2023, people will accept some, just like people have ignored the fact, effectively, that 20 to 30,000 people die every year of the flu. People just, you know, people know that, but they just internalize it and say, well, I, I didn't get my flu shot, but I'll be okay. Uh, and, you know, it's that lottery ticket, it might be your turn this year. Yeah. Uh, but the coronavirus will be there. Everybody will get the coronavirus. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Everyone's going to line up for it. They're going to line up. And so uh, then you're going to have all the lawsuits that are going to be created uh, from the people that take the coronavirus that have reactions to it. Yeah. And so somebody's got to indem indemnify the pharmaceutical companies. So it, it's good to talk about people don't want to help corporations. People don't want to help these people. People don't want to help those people. But nobody wants to take risk. Yeah. And so until you can figure out why somebody should take risk, there is really, there's really no reason to do it. Yeah. And just like I said about the depression, nobody that's your age who's accumulated assets owns a house, right? Owns property. You will never have enough cash the rest of your life if this goes on for 90 or 120 days. Yeah. Um, you'll, you'll think about every, it's just the way it is. It's just, I mean, the people who survived the depression in their minds never had enough money. Yeah. So um, you become less of a risk taker. You will continue to take risk. You will continue to, but you'll be longer about the decisions. You'll take fewer shots, and you know you'll and, and that whole you know that, that whole thought process about you're going to get five deals that are really you're really comfortable with, and three deals you're kind of comfortable with, and two deals you're just going to take a flyer on. Yeah, those two deals don't get done. <laughs> those two deals won't get yeah. done in the future, right? So uh, as you're uh, and I think everybody will be the same, Tyler. So what? Um, I, I, well, let me. I, uh, I need I to move on to. Yeah. I'm making a, trying to make a bunch of calls today, so um, uh, uh, definitely do more YouTube videos. I'll be watching for sure, and let's talk more as uh, all this uh, this interesting time in our lives move forward. And uh, I'd be remiss if I. Wanting to sell something in the next uh, little bit, we're going to be scrambling. Uh, we want any type of business we can work on. So, um, or if you want to buy something, if you know of anything, we'd love the opportunity. To, so, I, to I, I, or help somebody buy it. That's how there'll be a lot of investors looking to buy in um, about thirty days. Mm -hmm. There'll be lots of investors looking to buy in about thirty days. The question is, what will they pay for the properties, right? But yeah. There'll be a lot of activity. There'll be a lot of opportunity. To sell things in about 30 days. Okay. Well, uh, I'll be there. Hopefully, make some money to survive a few more months. Hey, right. and and so I may, if it'd be okay with you, I'm, I'll post this video of this particular conversation. Are you videoing right now? Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. I can't remember if I said anything uh, uh, that's uh, is off color. Well, <laughs> uh, I'll I'll send it to you, and then I'll let you decide what you want to do with it. That's perfect, sir. Send that, and I'll tell you if it's a green light. There you go. Good enough, man. Bye. Okay.